The saying C's get degrees is 100% true, y'all. Okay, so now you've applied for all those scholarships. You got your college acceptances coming in. How do you make a decision? Imagine being a 16 year old. This is your first year of college and y'all are completely virtual. You should be trying to put yourself in the position to where school can be a source of income for you. Being completely honest with y'all, I do not be reading those textbooks. No, I'm at school to get my education. I'm not even gonna risk wasting the money on the meal plan and the food job giving me is nasty. Hello you guys, I'm Marleya Thomas. If you're new here, if you're not, welcome back to another video. So today is currently August 16th and I start school August 21st. And this is about to be my senior year of college. So I just feel like it was an appropriate time for me to make this college advice video. Y'all, these four years of college has flown by completely. And I feel like overall I've had a very great and smooth college experience, college career you would say. So, I'm about to make this video and hopefully I can help y'all make y'all as smooth as mine was too. So just real quick before I jump into the tips, I want to tell y'all a little bit about myself and my education. Um, I'm majoring in business administration with an emphasis area on real estate. I started college when I was 16 years old through an early college program and the way that that works is my high school, the school district that, it, that it's in, they partner with our local community college and it allowed me to instead of spending my junior and senior year of high school in my actual high school building, I went to a community college and I did those whole two years for du dual credit so the dual credit allowed me to get my associate's degree while those credits also apply to my high school credits that i needed too and i ended up graduating high school and college literally two days apart from each other so i had my associate's degree up out of high school basically so then by the time i was 18 i was entering my third year of college and now here I am 19 entering my fourth year of college and I'm about to get that degree y'all about to be on my second one in 19 um this past summer I did three classes because for some reason like at my college the bachelor's degree that I'm getting it's not just 120 credits it's a little bit over that and I was like I'm not doing no extra semesters after this school year I want to be done so I was like let me just do summer school I did summer school so now I'm on track to just finish this one last school year and I'll be completely done with my bachelor's. I feel so blessed and fortunate to have been able to get that opportunity because I say it all the time like if this was in my last year of school I don't know what I would do. I'm so sick and tired of being in school and doing homework and having to go to campus. I can't imagine if this was just like my sophomore year, like if I was actually just on track instead of being ahead. If this was just my sophomore year and I still had two more years to go, I see why people drop out of college. I really do. But let's get into those tips. So hopefully my experience and what I have to offer y'all can stop y'all from thinking like that too. <laughs> Tip number one is perseverance. I feel like there's two very important stages where you have to persevere and it'll make a complete difference in your college career. So the first place is when you're actually applying to colleges and applying for scholarships and all that type of stuff. I know how annoying that part of life can be. You're in your senior year, you trying to have fun with your friends because it's your last year in high school together. You have all these assignments and finals and all that stuff that you have to do to finish up at school there. All your teachers are telling you that you got to meet these different requirements and apply to this many colleges and da 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 da. You got your family breathing on your back like where you gonna go? Go to a HBCU, do this, do that. And you still are trying to figure out how you about to make this transition in life and make the best decision for you. I get it. It's tough but you have to persevere through this because it's so easy to get exhausted with all those things going on and you'll just feel like huh i don't feel like applying in no more colleges i don't feel like applying in no more scholarships apply to every scholarship that you feel like you even if you don't feel like you might get accepted for it take that chance and still apply for every single scholarship y'all you should be trying to put yourself in the position to where school can be a source of income for you I have a full ride scholarship and then I have additional scholarships and I get a Pell Grant. My full ride scholarship takes care of all my tuition. 
So everything else that I get, it literally just comes right back to me. I don't have to pay. I'll pay for my textbooks out of it, but that's literally it. Everything else, I get to keep that, and I get to use school as a source of income for me because I applied for so many scholarships. And you have to, like, sometimes dig deep there's specific scholarships for you being like of a certain ethnicity or you identify with any type of certain groups like there's so many scholarships that are not just sports and academic scholarships and you're gonna be missing out if you don't persevere through that stage and get through the tiredness get through the annoyedness and still just go for every opportunity that you don't know that you will be missing out on if that makes sense the next stage that i feel like is very important for you to persevere through is this right here your last stretch of your senior year of college y'all because i'm kind of like okay i'm ready to jump into my career full force i'm ready to be able to do what i want to do and allocate my time to those specific things opposed to having to sit here and still do homework and everything else like life is carrying on and i'm still in school that's how i feel and it's like you're so close to the finish line but it's that right there the fact that you're so close and you can see the light at the end of the tunnel that makes you just want to be able to grab it but you can't get it's frustrating and that's just something that you just have to get through okay so now you've applied for all those scholarships you got your college acceptances coming in how do you make a decision my biggest thing that i say for that is Follow your heart. Follow what you want to do. Don't let nobody be in your ear telling you anything. Don't go to a school because it's popular or just because it's an HBCU. Make the decision that you feel like is best for you. This might sound a little cliche, but if you have to, take all the schools you got accepted to and write down a pros and cons list if that's how you want to have your criteria for you to decide what school to go to. Or pick the one that gives you the highest scholarship so you're coming out of college with the least amount of debt. Things like that. For me personally, I'm an only child and my parents are amazing and like they're not strict parents or anything. They don't bother me or anything like that. So I've just never been in a rush to hurry up and move out the house or get away from them or anything like that. So I had no problem with going to college in my hometown. Um, other people might have other motives for wanting to move out and go to a college in a different state and things like that. If that's what's going to help you make your decision know that that you don't want to go to a school in your hometown rule all those out cross those off the list i've never been one of those people that be like i want to go to an hbcu i have to go to an hbcu or i'm going to a school with the intentions of being able to party and kick it and all that type of stuff no i'm at school to get my education and i have zero regrets that i'm going to a pwi because i'm graduating debt free my my light just died, y'all. Hold on. But like I was saying, I'm graduating debt-free. I'm getting the exact same degree that I would be getting if I paid for it, if I went to an HBCU, if I went to any different other school, you know. And I've gotten a great education. I've learned so much in my school. So what I'm saying is, basically, it don't really matter what school you're going to. It doesn't matter. As long as the curriculum is good, you feel like you're going to learn something, you feel like you're going to get a lot out of what you got from going to that school, you feel like you're not going to regret your decision, that's the school you need to be choosing. Something that I wish I would have done differently was not be as hard on myself. I remember in like my, especially my first year of college, but like my first and second year of college, I would be in my room doing homework for hours hours trying to make sure that I perfected everything trying to make sure that I got an A on every assignment and A in there I'm talking if my A was a 90% and not a 95 100 I wasn't satisfied I was super hard on myself and it was draining and you don't want to drain yourself like that in the beginning or really at all so I wish I would have kind of cut myself some slack and let myself know like it's okay everything doesn't have to be so perfect but I also feel like some of that comes from your high school experience I just felt like over and over again teachers would say okay yeah I gotta get it together because in college y'all professors ain't gonna take this y'all professors are gonna expect this this and that from y'all so it puts the pressure on you that makes you feel like you have to be perfect in college when in reality that's not the case 
The saying C's get degrees is 100% true, y'all. If you get C's in every class throughout the entire college career that you have, you're gonna get the exact same degree if you would have gotten all A's, literally. So I'm not saying like go into it with that mentality, but I'm just saying if you mess up, if you feel like you're struggling to be perfect or anything like that, don't try to be. Now keep in mind that your GPA does matter if you're in like any organizations or you're trying to qualify for any scholarships. Your GPA does matter. And also you don't want to like mess up your GPA in the beginning and then by like your junior year of college you start to care more and you try to start applying for more scholarships and things of that sort and you're trying to build your resume and apply for jobs and get accepted for internships and now you're trying to play catch up because you messed up your GPA in the beginning. Now you're trying to get all A's so you can balance it out. No, in the very beginning you're going to want to try and do good so you don't have to play catch up like that. And that brings me to my next point, which is do things that is going to build your resume, whether that's student organizations or you having a certain scholarship or you've done multiple internships throughout your college career. Do things that is going to build your resume, especially because you never know by the end of your college career what you're going to want to do. Me right now as a senior, I am not the same person that I was when I was a freshman. Of course, this entire time, even before I went to college, I knew that I wanted to get into real estate. I knew that I wanted a business degree, but I'm interested in so many other things now that I would be able to apply for and try to get myself into just because I do have a very thick and long resume that it would look good and help me get myself into those doors because I built that resume for myself basically. Like you don't know what what you're doing right now, how it's gonna be able to set you up for in the future. You wanna make sure that you're setting yourself up for any possibilities and not cutting yourself off from anything because you're just focused on having fun right now. Like no, actually do stuff that's gonna build your resume. Next, I wanna speak about studying. It is so important that you learn your study style and how you wanna be able to teach yourself because in college you're gonna have to do that a lot. Um, the professor in most colleges, classes can be anywhere from 60 to 200 people. Like, you're never going to know. And there's not always going to be a moment when that professor is going to be able to call on you when you have a question or cater to your specific needs. You're going to have to learn how to adapt and really teach yourself. My very first year of college, I was 16 years old. It was 2020 and the pandemic had just happened so we were out of school that whole first year was completely online and it was just crazy like imagine being a 16 year old this is your first year of college and y'all are completely virtual not even gonna lie to y'all i would be tired in them zoom classes half sleep so by the time it was over i would just be teaching myself from the textbook and retaking notes and everything like that and then by me doing that it helped me realize that that was my learning style anyway that's how i learned the best when i go through everything and i just teach it myself me listening to the teacher just lecture does no benefit to me actually retaining the knowledge so that's what it is y'all y'all have to figure out what it is that's going to help y'all retain the knowledge the most I feel like in school it's always, oh, are you a visual learner? Are you a this type of learner? But they don't actually give you the tools to like set yourself up for that learning style independently. Like you shouldn't have to rely on the teacher or being around other students, anything like that, for you to be able to ingest that knowledge. Like you need to be able to teach yourself because at the end of the day, that's what's going to give you the most benefit. I plan on posting on here different videos of how I stay organized, how I take my notes, how I teach myself, all of those different things, how I stay on top of my work. So I'll be able to give y'all some more in-depth tools when it comes to that. But I'm very self-sufficient when it comes to school and my learning because going to those lectures, they don't be helping me. Now this is kind of just like the more general, not serious tips part of the video. One, y'all. Try y'all cafeteria's food before y'all pay for a meal plan. If you're going there a few times and the food is nasty every single time, don't get that meal plan because then it's going to be a waste of your money. 
before school started it sounded all sweet and dandy like yeah i'm gonna just buy a meal plan on my scholarship money it ain't necessarily coming out of my pocket then i think it was like freshman orientation or something and we had went into the cafeteria and they gave us all food and stuff it was nasty and then it was something else that i had did and the food was nasty then too so i was like i'm not even gonna risk wasting the money on the meal plan and the food y'all giving me is nasty being completely honest with y'all i do not be reading those textbooks out of all the classes that i've taken i've probably like actually went through like maybe three different textbooks and use them to do my work my classes have always just been set up to where i'm able to do my work without actually reading the textbook except those three that i had just mentioned but my last semester i'm still trying to be a good student i'm knowing this already like i never use the textbooks so why waste my money on it i'm still trying to be a good student i buy the textbooks don't use them so this semester for my summer semester i just tried it out i didn't get no textbooks and i got an a in every single one of those classes but do that at your own risk y'all like once again i'm very good at teaching myself and i'm able to pull from like the class lectures and class notes and things like that like just kind of skimming through everything and getting information instead of just like actually reading the textbooks and i know that sounds weird because i'm like those lectures don't actually help me they don't necessarily help me but like my professors always post like recorded videos of them talking and stuff so i only refer back to those if i like absolutely need to for something now most of our work is completely virtual but at the community college that i had went to we had got like a lot of paperwork still in like certain classes when you get that paperwork back keep it until you know that it's in the grade book and it's graded how you want it to be Professors feel like they are able to take their sweet time putting grades in and things like that. And then sometimes when they do finally put the grades in, they're wrong. So make sure that you keep your papers so you're able to go back and show them like, um, that's not what I did. And then also when it comes to your grades, don't hesitate to speak up. If you feel like you've been graded wrongly for something or you feel like you deserve more than what you actually got or something like that, email your professor set up a meeting to talk to them anything like that because nine times out of ten they're going to be willing to talk to you and listen to you if they're a good professor and y'all would be able to come to an understanding and reach a conclusion my sophomore year of college i had a chemistry class and he had put my grades in like wrong for a few different labs and i had my lab sheets and i was able to go back and show him like i did do this work i did answer this question i did get these answers when i did my experiment why is my grade this and then he was able to go in there and change everything for me and i think at one point my grade was like a c in that class and i told you at that time i was a perfectionist so i'm like i can't have no c my parents have never even like been on my butt about my grades or anything so that's just like me putting the pressure on myself i can't have no c so i went and talked to him about it and it ended up bringing my grade from a c to an a just because he changed those things that he put in wrong so don't let the teachers get away with that and the last thing that i want to touch on is have a feel of what your workload is because technically four classes is considered a full schedule at least i know at my school it is and i think that's kind of like standard at other colleges too four classes can be a full schedule if you feel like having more than that is too much or too big of a workload for yourself and the life that you have if there's nothing wrong with only doing those four classes it might take you longer to graduate but there's nothing wrong with that i rather you go slower and actually get things done and learn and perform to your best ability opposed to rushing through college than not succeeding and you getting drained and wanting to drop out and all that type of stuff know what your workload is then on the other hand of that if you feel like four and five classes is easy for you do more this coming up semester i'm taking six classes because like i said i'm ready to get it done and over with if you're able to take more classes and get it done faster get your degree done and over with do summer school do all that summer school was so light y'all i think it was like seven weeks in total i did three classes which is technically considered a full summer schedule like three classes during the summer they would say like that's a lot of workload because 
whatever it wasn't um it was all completely online asynchronous so like i didn't have zoom meetings or anything like that that i had to be at on the regular i was able to just do my work and fly through it know your workload if you can handle more take more so you can get it done and over with but you guys that is it for this video i thank you so much for listening to me if you are new here please hit that subscribe button so you can continue to listen to me watch my videos see what i have to offer if you guys have any questions for me don't hesitate to let me know in the comments if there's anything that i didn't touch on that y'all want to know about or like y'all have anything specific that y'all want to know just ask me and i would love to answer for y'all my dms are always open on instagram just talk to me. Thank you so much for watching.